Kalalali Hau Bashim Yawashai, Bashim Rakakodash, double honors unto the apostles and the elders of the Great Millstone, peace and salutations unto the Akiam, the brothers pushing this truth throughout the four corners of the earth in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever. To the scattered, the speckled widows who like to be scattered among the heathen, I say shalom, and I say shalom unto the few and faithful Akwat, the sisters listening and learning. This is your brother Yerushalam from the GMS Prophetic Vibrations Camp or the Trinidad and Tobago coming at you with another video to the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yawashai Bashim Rakakodash. Now this video is going to be entitled The Signs of the End. You know, it draw at night. Alright, and in this video I'm going to go through this article from UN News. Alright, it, it reads that um, natural disasters occurring three times more often than 50 years ago. You know, so hey, you know, they we they, they we just seeing more and more signs of the end, you know, and you know, and as the Lord said, you know, you know, the Lord say to to watch diligently. Why he commanded us to watch and pray, all right. So when we go when we go into the scriptures, all right, let's get a quick precept here. All right, the book of Second Ezra chapter nine and verse one. This is what the Lord said to do. Second Ezra nine and one. He answered me then and said, measure thou the time diligently in itself. So this is what we doing. We measure any time and like good watchmen we send out the word right we see destruction imminent all right um he answered me then and said measure thou the time diligently in itself and when thou see as part of the signs pass what signs all these signs the weather signs as going on in face of you all right you know the different um the different uh, as i say acts of god and uh, or force forces major right and i'll go through those definitions shortly all right you see mega fires, you know, burning down in the Amazon, in Africa, you know, extreme weather patterns like you know what we had in Texas, the snow, the snowstorm, right? The hurricanes, you have twisters, you know, in the United States, in Babylon, right? We seen we seen um you know desert locusts, swarms of locusts, right? You know, we had the plague, of course, we know we know we know about that, right? You know, we're not even gonna mention that word, right? And I'm gonna go through when I go through the, the, the definitions for the acts of Guani Force Major, you'll understand why that is actually, you know, why that's actually a, a work of the Most High, right? So, lightnings, like what we had in Trinidad and Tobago, there were serious lightning storms. A while back, you know, they, even um, one of the statues of, um, of Mary, you know, the Roman Catholic statues of Mary, you know, it was struck by lightning and the whole belly was eaten out, you know? You know, that, that, that Europeanized statue of, of Mary, you know, which is a false statue, a false image, all right? You know, it's as Job 9 and 24 says, you know, he covered the faces of the judges, this, this wicked man who is Esau Edom, all right? For floods, earthquakes, um, even what happened with the evergreen ship, all right? You know, just the other day, you know, was it last week, that blocked the, um, the Suez Canal for six and a half or seven days, all right? You know, you know. And and that's 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 the hand of the Lord. That's the hand of the Lord. Alright? That's the hand of the Lord. So the Lord said, Measure thou diligently the time in itself when thou seest part of the signs pass, which I told thee before. Then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time when the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, so you see we see that already. Then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. For like as all that is made in the world had a beginning and an end, the end is manifest. Right? The end is made manifest, made clear now that we be here. Right? Even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings in wonders and powerful works and endings in effects and signs. So we in the end time, right? You know, we in the end here. That's why we've seen all these effects and signs. Alright? You know, um, you know, and when we go back to this article here, you know, it says three times more often that three, three is perfection. Alright, so there's the perfection of the time, you know. The Lord set times and the boundaries, right? You know, he set the boundaries for this for Esau and all that he can't pass. According to the book of Job. Alright? You know, and this and these these are the signs that this man's kingdom is falling. Alright? You know? As as when we go into um, Second Ezra six, you know, it basically says, you know, roughly paraphrasing that, you know, Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of the world that follows. So this is the signs of the end of Esau's kingdom, 
Alright, and he knows it. Alright? This is why he's gonna come down with great wrath according to Revelation 12 and 12. Alright? So so these end times, you know, they come in, you know, fifty years ago things were happening, but not as often now. So it, it, it is likened onto a woman in travailing, a woman in, in, in birth, in the process of giving birth. Alright? So these birth pangs, you know, of a woman, you know, um they come slowly at first, you know, and then you know, coming down, coming down to the closer to when the birth is going to happen, they come hotter and hotter, right? Until the baby is eventually born, right? You know, but we we now we looking forward to to Yahweh Shai coming back. You know, the day star. You know, he when he, so when he's revealed, right? Because as he said in the scriptures, he wouldn't meet them as a man. So he's coming back in his godlike form, right? To destroy the heathen, right? And two thirds of our own people and all, right? So that's what's going on there. You know, just as a woman goes through the birth pangs, you know. You know, when she's different, um, centimeter dilated, uh, her passageway, her womb, right? You know, 10 centimeters, how much centimeters, you know, we, we close to the end. We close to fully dilated right now, all right? So let me go to our, scri our scripture in, um, let me go to our scripture in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, and verse 8, it says, all these are the beginning of sorrows, right? You know, all these are the beginning of sorrows. Then, then shall they deliver you up. You know, this is going into delivering us to um, up to be to be afflicted and killed. But the the basically, basically, let me let me jump back to a few verses here, or one verse. Let me see. Hold on, hold on a second there. Matthew twenty four and verse verse six. And ye shall hear wars of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrow. So, all these things happening, you know, pretty much right now. All right. You now let's let's go into this into the um into the articles. I'm gonna take a read on this article here. It says natural disasters occurring three times more often than 50 years ago from the UN. You know, um, and, 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 and to understand, you have to understand the way of the Lord. All this is leading to the famine, right? And all that's going on right now with that, um, this global um, so called cure, right, is going to lead to the death of many, you know, because um, really and truly, you know, that this is just the beginning, right? There's so many seeds of great death. Um, so new and unprecedented forms of natural disasters are more heavily felt in the agricultural industry, right? So affecting food, right? The UN Food and Agriculture Organization said on Thursday, at no point other at no other point, sorry, in history have agri-food systems faced more hazards such as mega fires, extreme weather, unusual large desert locust swarms, and emerging biological threats. As over the past year, and I'm not gonna say that word for obvious reasons, you know. Um, nor have they been seen at such frequency, intensity, and complexity. So the pain, just, just as I explained, you know, the woman in travail, pain is coming hotter and hotter. All right? These, these disasters devastate agricultural livelihoods, inflicting cascading negative economic consequences from household to national levels that could potentially endure for generations. So this is why they're going to have, you know, according to Second Nations 15, um, there will be great famine and they're going to have people invading one another's houses for food. Alright? So, you know, I won't go too much deep into this, um, too deep into this article. What I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to put this up in the, in the description box. It basically just goes on to talk about the poorer countries at risk. You know, because a lot of the poorer, smaller countries, they, they import a lot of their food. You know, which is a problem even Trinidad and Tobago, you know. Which is why they're rushing around right now trying to grow food locally. All right at this last minute all right um so let's go to a quick precept here second as just um let me go to second as just 16 and verse 17 it says war is me war is me in the destruction right who will deliver me in those days the beginning of sorrows all right so precept upon precept right the beginning of sorrows from you know matthew chapter 24 Right, the, and create mornings and the beginning of famine and create debt. Right, so that's what's coming in this place. Four types of debt, according to Jeremiah 15. Right, the beginning of wars and the power shall stand in fear. Right, the beginning of evils, you know, and the, why they're going to stand in fear. 
they're going to stand in fear because they have no control. All right? You know, the beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils come? All right? Because um, they, with the power of the Lord, Yahweh Shem, Yahweh Shai, those, the, the so-called acts of God and force majeure, they have no control. That's why these powers, which is Esau, Edom, the elites, they're going to stand in fear. All right? Verse 19 says, Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. Amendment for who? Israel. All right? But all, but all, but for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges. They wouldn't listen. Right? Our people's not going to listen. Right? You know? So what the Lord is going to send? Verse 21 says, Behold, victuals shall be so good cheap upon earth, right? that they shall think themselves be, to be in good case, even and even then shall evils grow upon earth, sword, famine, and great confusion. Right? Right? For many of them that dwell upon earth shall perish of famine, and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. Sword is the, is the man, the sword is the gun. Right? So, this is what's coming here. And, you know, when we go into these words, right, which I'm going to do here, uh, let's go into the word um, act of God, meaning, right? Act of God. It says, it reads, an instance of uncontrollable natural forces in operation. So, you know, just like the flood, right? Esau is not going to have any control over it, which is why they're going to be afraid. All right? So, they say anything uncontrollable, you know, basically speaking about the same thing we went over, like the natural disasters, you know, the volcano eruption, like what's going on in St. Vincent and the Grandies right now. All right? The volcano, you know, alert is on red. Right, it, it literally is the, the lava is reaching the brim of the volcano, right? And people are panicking and they're looking to evacuate people, right? St. Vincent and the Grenadines in the Caribbean, right? Snowstorms, we saw hurricanes, twisters. These are acts of God, right? So called acts of God, but um, but also we can go into the meaning of um, force majeure. Right, force majeure. Force majeure. Right, it says an unforeseeable, unforeseeable circumstances that prevent someone from fulfilling a contract. So, you know, these things are unforeseeable. They can't control it. You know, but, but it doesn't only go into these these natural so-called disasters, right? It also speaks about. It also goes into, you know, um, these these riots that are going to take place. You know, the confusion. You know, the war that's going to be stirred up, right? Because it's not men. Men, men think that they're doing it, you know, they're in control, but they're not. It's the Lord, it's Yahweh Shem, Yahweh Shai, on the left-hand side, you know, because he controls both right-hand side, righteousness, and left-hand side, which is wickedness, all right? The second part of this definition says irres irresistible compulsion or superior strength. So, you know, not, nobody could, Esau can't, in no way, fight against Yahweh Shem, Yahweh Shai, all right? The Lord is just too powerful. You got to fear the Lord, all right? We understand how powerful Yahweh Shem, Yahweh Shai is. You know, and just as the definition says here, you know, Yahweh Shai is going to prevent them, Esau, from fulfilling the contract, from fulfilling the agreement, when, you know, the secret council. All right? And, that, and that's what's about to happen. All right? You, you, all the, all the lockdowns, the strikes, the riots, you know, that's, that they say are, are not forced, that they say are, are pretty much force majeures, they are pretty, they are really acts of God. You know, they are also acts of God. You know Why? When you understand this truth, you understand that Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai is in full control. You know? And, you know, and, and really and truly, when you think about it, you're really going to take an act of God to bring down this devil. You know? Because he has so much power, but his power was given to him from Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. So he's the only one, Yahweh Shai is the only one who could take him down. Alright? You know, let me go through a quick, a few quick precepts here. Uh, this is the book of, um, let me go Jeremiah. Book of Jeremiah, chapter ten, and and verse twenty three. Because you know, um, man's goings are the Lord's. Right? If if so, how can a man know his way? You know, Proverbs twenty and twenty four says that. Jeremiah ten and twenty three says, "O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. Because who who, who directs his steps? Yahushem Yahushai. The Lord is the one who directs his steps." Alright? 
Even though man thinks he's directing his own step, Esau thinks he's directing his own step, but he's not. This is Job 12 and verse 16. It reads, um, With him is strength and wisdom, the deceived and the deceiver as are his. Right? So the deceiver is chiefly Esau Edom in one. They, they, he, the Lord, is in control of them. The Lord is in control of, it, of Esau. Alright? So, so these birth pangs at the end are happening. You know, Esau is not, is not in control of them. You know, as much as he likes to think he's doing it, is the Lord is making him do it. Alright? To fulfill his the word. His word. Alright? Let me go 2nd Ezra 16. 2nd Ezra 16. Verse 16. Let me go from verse, let me jump to verse 37. It reads, let me just highlight here. It reads, Behold, the plagues draw nigh and are not slack. This is what's happening. As when a woman with child in the ninth month bringeth forth a son. So a woman in the ninth month, you know, she ready to deliver. All right, so it's so the world ready to deliver, deliver up, you know. Yahweh Shai and Yahweh Shai is coming back. Right within two or three hours of a great of her birth, great pains come past her womb. Yeah, the same thing we were speaking about earlier. Right, the 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 womb is dilating to pass out the baby. You know, which pains when the child cometh forth they slack not a moment. Even so shall not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth. Right, and the world shall mourn and sorrow shall come upon it on every side. O my people, hear my word. Make you ready to the battle in in and in those evils, even as pilgrims upon the earth. So we can't be we, we even be one place. We be pilgrims on the earth, you know. We gonna be pilgrims on the earth. And your Bashem, your Shai will be our protection against all these plagues, right? All these plagues, you know. So you know about something on the weather channel here. It's talking about you know the, it's talking about the um the situation right now in Saint Vincent and the Grenadines, where it says the Vincentian Prime Minister warned. If the volcano, this La Soufre volcano erupt, start explosively erupts, there could be a four month period of evacuation. Right? You have to evacuate the whole islands, right? You know the last the La Soufre volcano alert is raised to red. Right? Expect it to erupt exclusively without further warning in the next 24 to 48 hours. So we see what's going on. We in the end, the signs at the end are upon us. So what we have to do, fear Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Right? You know, because Yahweh Hashem Yahushua is the only power, right? Yahweh Hashem Yahushua is the only power, right? That's that's why the scripture calls him the um the king of terrors, right? It says Job eighteen and verse fourteen. It says um this um it's Job eighteen and ten. The snare is laid for him in the ground and a trap for him in the way. Talking about Esau Edom, right? Terror shall make him afraid on every side and shall drive him to his feet. His strength shall be hunger bitten and destruction shall be ready at his side. It shall devour the strength of the skin. Even the firstborn of death shall devour his strength. Right? His confidence shall be rooted out of his tabernacle and it shall bring him to the king of terrors. Who's the king of terrors? Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. You know? And the scripture says, you know, or expressly, it's a fearful thing. The fall into the hands of the living power. So, who you have to fear, they don't fear Esau and take their stuff, their mischievous device, right? Which we know I'm not going to call the name, right? You know, fear the Lord. Hebrews 10 and 31, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. He is the true power, right? The true, because God, God literally means power, and Hebrew is Allah, which means power, right? You know, so the true power is Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Where all these things are coming from. So who you fear? Fear him. Fear him. Fear him. Because because the signs at the end are right upon us. Alright. This is uh let me go back to let's go to our scripture here. So like here. Let's go Isaiah chapter sixty six. So like here. Let's go Psalms. Psalms sixty six and verse two. Um, let me just check something here. Just bear with me a moment here.
yeah, Psalm 66 and verse 3 say unto, unto the most high power, you know, how terrible art thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto thee. You know, because when Yahweh Shai come, you know, these are the these are the, the powerful works that the Lord is showing. You know, for when Yahweh Shai actually comes now, you know, he's gonna take down the power and authority and they're gonna submit. Alright, and who don't submit, they will be put to death. Alright? You know, thine enemies shall submit unto thee. Alright? You can't face the power of Yahweh Shim Yahweh Shai. He's pure power. Alright? He's pure power. This is the book of Nahum, chapter 1, and from verse 5, it says, The mountains quake at him, and the hills melt. Right? The powers, you know, the powers of this world, and the earth is burnt at his presence. Yea, the world, and all that dwell therein. Come on, talking about the, the ICBM nuclear destruction. Right? Verse 6 says, Who can stand before his indignation, and who can abide in the face and serve his anger? And Yahweh Shai is coming with fury and anger, according to Isaiah 63. Right? You know? And Isaiah 66 and 15, right? His fury is poured out like fire and the rocks are thrown down by him, right? The Lord is going to bring down the mountains, which is their rulership, right? So all these things that happen on the face of the earth, you know, which I'll hit a few quick precepts, you know, is basically is Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, right? The Lord, the Lord is doing all this. And he's doing all this, you know, to fulfill his word and to bring down he saw his kingdom. This is Matthew 8 and verse 26. This is Yahweh Shai. You know, and he said unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? When he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. This is Yahweh Shai did this, right? But the men marveled, saying, What manner of this a man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? So you know, it's, it's only natural that they will be Yahweh, but Yahweh Shai, because Yahweh Shai was the one who created them. Right? Through him, all things were made. Alright? You know, as, as I quote, and see the word of your father, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Alright? So, you understand now why the elements are full of obedience to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And, you know, and, and some of these elements and the spirits, the principalities and the powers were created, you know, for vengeance. According to um, the book of Sirach, chapter 39. You know, these these were created for vengeance, and that's exactly what they're gonna do. They're gonna obey the word of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, Sirach thirty nine, and verse verse uh, let's go verse twenty twenty eight. There be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. Fire, hail, and hail, and famine, and death. All these were created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents and the sword, punishing the wicked to destruction. Right? So that's what's coming here. Even animals gonna be turning against on people and killing them. They shall rejoice in his commandment, and they shall be ready for upon earth when need is, and need is now. Right? And furthermore, when the time comes, it's gonna get worse and worse. And when their time is come, they shall not transgress his word. So they're gonna obey. Just like how the winds obey the Yahweh Shai, they're going to obey, right? You know, they are obedient servants. <laughs> they are obedient servants to the Lord. Um, let's go to Psalms 135, 135 and verse 5. It says, For I know that the Lord is great and the Lord is above all gods, all powers, right? Whatsoever the Lord pleased at, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai pleased at, that did he in heaven and in earth. In the seas and all the deep places. Alright? He causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He make it lightnings for the rain. He bring out the wind out of his treasuries. The Lord is all powerful. Alright? I have some other precepts to go into, but for essence of time, I'm gonna cut it down. Let's go to the book of Job, chapter 37, verse 6. For it says the Lord, for Job 37 and 6, for he said to the snow, Be thou on earth. Likewise to the small rain, and to the great rain of his strength, he sealeth up the hand of every man, that all men may know his work. You know, because men in the hand of every man, the power of a man, you know, they, you cannot, cannot contend with the power of your Hashem, your Hashem. You have to, you have to stop your work, you know, when they have these snowstorms and hurricanes, everything ceases, right? Then the beasts go into the dens and remain in their places, out of the south come at the whirlwind, and cold out of the north. 
by the breath of the Most High frost is given, and the breath of the waters is straightened. Right, straightened means straight, straight is a position of difficulty, straightness, you know, rough waters, right? Also, by watering, he weareth the thick cloud, he scattereth his bright cloud, right? And it is turned around about by his counsels. And who is this counsel of the counsels of the Lord going to the angels, right? You know, you know, because you know, greater the company of them that publish it, you know, publish the works of Yahweh Shem Yahushai, that they may do whatever he commanded them upon the face of the world in the earth. Right? So the angels are the ones doing it. Now why you see in chariots in the midst of storms and it's like, you know, because the, the angels are the one kind of the work, the, the will of the Heavenly Father. Alright? You know, angels from heaven, you know. And we on the earth as messengers as well, we kind out. Lord willingly among the like we kind out that the, the work of the Lord too. Alright? He caused it. He caused it, it to come, whether for correction or for his land or for mercy. And in this case, these things are coming for correction. But as we read in second as just alright, they're not gonna listen. Our people two thirds are not gonna listen. Alright? They're not gonna listen. They're not gonna listen. So Matthew 24 and verse 21 it reads for then shall there be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time no nor ever shall be all right and if it wasn't for the elect sake you know all, all flesh would you know basically would perish let me read verse 22 and except those days be shortened there shall be no flesh be saved but for the elect sake those days shall be shortened all right so you're all going to shorten it because it's going to be so severe you know you know, Jacob's trouble just come and gonna be so severe that no flesh gonna gonna survive unless the Lord should and shorten the days. Alright? It's real times coming, people. Wake up. Don't tarry to turn on the Lord. Alright? Luke twenty one and verse eleven. Alright? It says, And great earthquake shall be in diverse places, and famines and pestilence, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. Alright? But for all these things um you know and this is going into again you know it's going into i believe i read this read this part before that's just going into um into the signs all right and you know and basically that they're gonna deliver us up right let's go to mark and verse mark verse 13 and 8 all right it says the same thing pretty much all right that's precept upon precept line upon line all right let's go let's go to the book of Deuteronomy, Old Testament, Deuteronomy 31 and verse 17. Then we're going to close this out. Deuteronomy 31 and 17 reads, Then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them, right? And I will hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured. The Lord is going to hide his face from me two thirds you know, in this time. You know, and they're going to be devoured by all these plagues, pestilence, you know, this weather that's coming on the earth. And many evils and troubles shall befall them, you know. It happened before and it will happen, it happening now again. But even worse this time. So that they will say in that day, And not these evils come upon us because of the Most High is not among us. Right? And I will surely hide my face in that day for, for all the evils which they shall have wrought. In that they turned unto other gods and they turned unto the God, you know. Which is the false gods, right? Who they call the Lord, the Lord name, and, you know, the, the blasphemy, the Lord name, and polluting his name with other names, namely God and Jesus Christ, which is a lie. There's not the Lord, the Lord, the Heavenly Father's name is Yahweh, and his son's name is Yahweh Shai. Alright? Those are the true names in the Paleo Hebrew, which is the language that we spoke, our language. Alright? So that's, this, this is what going, the Lord is going to do. The Lord is hiding his face right now. Alright? I'm going to one more precept here. And I'm gonna close it out. Uh, this is let me go back to Second Ezra, Second Ezra chapter sixteen and verse fifty-two. All right. It reads, "For for yet a little iniquity, for yet a little iniquity shall be taken away out of the earth, and righteousness shall reign among you." All right. So that's what's about to happen when Yahweh Shem Yahushai, Yahweh Shai Mashiach comes, right? You know, all this is a lead up to him coming, you know. It's a sign, right, for us, you know, but a lot of people are still going to die from these things, you know, but the real destruction, you know, it's just, it's just, it's coming, 
and it's just it's just gonna be lead up to there to there hotter and hotter until that time comes worse and worse right so with that i pray that this lesson has been edifying i want to give all praises honor and glory unto you how about shim yawashai bahasham racha kodash right double honors unto the apostles and the elders of the great millstone for teaching us this truth wah abad babal destruction unto babylon shalom